Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this virtual professional development training. Uh, my name is Joe Schmidt. I'm the social studies specialist at the Maine Department of Education. Today, I am happy to welcome Nicole Ladner from the Secretary of State's office, who's going to be walking through the Secretary of State's kids page um, for our participants. She'll be taking questions and she can share some experiences, not only about the web page, but some of the other programs and stuff that the Secretary of State's office um, has available for teachers and students. Um, I do ask that um, if you would like a contact hour certificate for this training, please stick around until the end of the training and drop it. Um, I will drop the survey into the chat box for you. Um, it'll send you a certificate at that time and I can explain more later, but I just wanna let you know at the beginning, if you would like a contact hour for this, please stick around all the way till the end. Again, I will monitor the chat box for Nicole, but without any further ado, I will turn it over to Nicole Ladner from the Secretary of State's office. Good morning. Um, yes, my name is Nicole Ladner. I work at the Secretary of State's office and one of my jobs here is to manage the Secretary of State's kids programs and the kids page. We have a lot of um, information there and I thought I'd just review it for you this morning, answer any questions you might have. Um, it's been around the kids page for a long time. It's kind of the de facto kids page for the for the state system. Although we will be visiting um, a few other pages today, I'll let you know some other sites um, within the state system that have some kids programming and some curriculum that you might be interested in. I want to start um, with the programs piece so that we can get to it all. At the top, we have the 2020 census in school week which is timely for right now. The Secretary of State is part of the main complete count committee and it's their job to make sure there's an accurate um, count and to just promote participation in the census. I wanted to bring you to this page to point out that we have a fun video here that our communications person put together about why the census is important. I don't know if I slide up, can you see that? It's blocked for me, but I'm hoping you can see that. Um, so check that out if you have some time. It, it's, it might be useful for you to use with some sort of civics explaining about um, the census in Maine. If you go to the link that's available on our site, we've linked up with the US Census Bureau's Let's see if I've got this going here. Oh, that worked for me this morning. I don't know why it's not working out. If you go to this site right here, we have, looks like we're getting there. The Census Bureau has set up something for educators here with all sorts of activities and resources that you may find interesting to review with your class to put together some uh, a plan about the um, census. So that's a little bit extra. We don't usually have it on our, our website, but we do have it for now. I can get back to the home. Oh, I'm very, very sorry to do this to you. You can get to our kids page site via the Secretary of State's website, maine.gov slash SOS. Kids page is on the left here with an additional slash KIDS. So we went out to the Secretary site there briefly. We have a list of all our programs here. If you're interested in being on an email list to receive announcements about what's going on with each program, you can fill out a form here and email it back to us. The most popular program we have is the Constitution Poster and Essay Contest. This has um, gone by, the contest due date was um, on Friday the 13th. However, I wanted to just point it out to you because you may still use it now if you would like to utilize the information here and put something together for a plan for your students. We will 
um, pass out participation certificates for your students if you're interested in it. Just shoot me an email, nicole.ladner at maine.gov. And that email is available throughout these pages. So let me know if you're interested and we will get together some certificates for you and some bookmarks we can send to your kids um, if you'd like to do it. So the younger students participate by creating posters. So the younger ones will do main symbols. That's the easier stuff. There's all sorts of information on our symbols here. And we have information about main history, a little, a little bit of a brief on each of these topics. As of course, you could have them do some research on their own. We also have a direct link to the main constitution and basically can submit posters or essays to us. So if you just want to let me know if you're interested in, you, you can do it on your own, but if you're interested in a participation certificate, just let me know and we can take care of that for you. We have the eighth grade citizenship program as well. It's not a contest, but I just wanted to briefly point it out. This is really popular. Schools with an eighth grade um, are given the opportunity to present a citizenship award to a graduating student. We are anticipating that schools will, get, are, will need to adjust their commencement, you know, their mini commencement um, award ceremonies for the eighth grades this year. May need to do a virtual ceremony, may mail these certificates. We're hoping that they will still honor a student with this award. So if you have colleagues that are in charge of being the coordinator of this award, I just wanted to point out that we will be able to email the logins to the coordinators at their home rather than only mailing it to the school. We will use a default date of June 1st because we recognize that schools you know, can't anticipate if or when they can have an award ceremony. We can make a PDF of the certificate available to download so that the coordinator could just print it and mail it to the student where we don't take student home addresses. And we are just going to drop the piece where we have, you know, coordinate with legislators to present the award at an award ceremony. We obviously will not do that this year. So we've simplified it. We are working with the folks that inform me to update some items in our online application form. And we need to make sure that that can be done first before we update our web page. So if you are working with coordinators, please encourage them to check back and um, to go ahead with this. Well, we want to make sure these students are recognized, if at all possible. If you see or hear about things that I should know about uh, that kids or educators are looking for regarding these awards, please send me an email and let me know what we can do to help and assist you with that. Very happy to do so. The archives visits, we wanna briefly point that out on our website. I know that later on today, there's another webinar with Heather Moran at the Maine State Archives. If you're interested in this, I encourage you to participate in that later on at one o'clock. They, I've been doing this job for a long time and part of the prizes for the kids that win the Constitution Poster and Essay Contest or our Native American uh, Essay Contest is a visit to Augusta to see the sites here and to visit the Maine State Archives. And they, are, they get a archives presentation and a brief tour and they're able to see the items that we have in our holdings. We have some fantastic Native American um, records and trading records, maps. Um, we have extensive information at the archives on this main civil war and uh, the constitution. And they are able to work with teachers. You know, if you have a particular topic that you are teaching and you'd like to work with the archives for a presentation, 
you may not be able to go in now, but I bring that up because I find that teachers are just like surprised at what we have available, the programming that we have, and how interested the students are in making the connection between their town and monument they drive by every day in their town and what we know about it at the state archives, records we might have about it. Sometimes they bring out maps of a particular town and show, you know, you, you may recognize some of these streets still. Um, they still exist, or they, here's a bunch of family names that signed the census this particular year. Maybe these families are still in your town. Maybe they still own the same land. Maybe you know these people. The kids are really jazzed by it all. And of course, a lot of this can be adapted to online learning. So please consider the archives when you are thinking about um, creating a lesson for your online teaching. We have a voter registration drive program in place, but I will skip that for now and bring you over to the Congressional Medal of Honor project. Now this is a service learning project. So it may not be able to be fully implemented with an online component, but there is a lot on this webpage that I would say older students, maybe the sixth graders um, and up, but you can look at it and check it out and see if there's anything you'd be interested in here. What it is, is we encourage students, I can't quite see it because of the camera on my page. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. We encourage students um, in classrooms to research and find out if there's any recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor in their town, in their county, somewhere near them, and you can change the search function here to find somebody near you. You might find a recipient, you can check, you can click on it to learn more about it. I think there's pictures of them, some of them. You can learn about their citation, find out what they did, and if you'd like to do some research on this person, would your class be interested in creating a memorial for this person? And what we'd like to see is everyone who's received the Congressional Medal of Honor in me have some sort of memorial, existing memorial to their sacrifice. One okay. thing, I'm sorry? Can I ask a question at this time? Yeah. Can you research that by town? Yes, there okay. is a drop down for town. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. That was my question because students might want to, um, in my project with their town research, might want to um, add that to their information. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So if you, you may have many cities in your SAD, many towns in your SAD, or you may not have any recipient close to you. So go ahead and search, see if there's somebody that has nothing. Some of these Civil War recipients, they were given the Congressional Medal of Honor for things that students might not now consider honorable. Um, so the secretary always reminds me that we need to keep it um, in context of the time. So you may feel like, oh, I'm not sure I want to focus on this with my students. You might want to find another one, depending on the age of your students. So there's plenty there to look, look at. Um, I wanted to highlight this this one right here, this Old Town um, ROTC program needed a service learning pro uh, project. And the um, coordinator contacted me and they had fun with this project and they created, I think they had a memorial bench. They, they have a um, granite bench in their town with you know some plantings around it. And they had the VFW come out and do a little flag raising ceremony and they use the community to recognize it and they did a great job with it. They did it, you know, soup to nuts, the whole thing. They created this 
PowerPoint. And there are a couple slides of interest where the students put together curriculum linkages with their ROTC programming, kind of small. But they also did one for, you know, this one says research skills, art history, media planning, interpretation, coordinating, internet skills. They really had, you know, show how this program is helpful for all sorts of teachings. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know the words that you would use for that, but I wanted to point that out for you, that that might be something that you would be interested in. Any questions about this program? We also have, I can go back here, our Native American essay contest. I'll just do a quick, quick review of this one. We do it in the fall every year. And um, it's basically meant to, at the very beginning when the Native American history component was added to, to main history, there, there wasn't any programming available. So the secretary being from Old Town, um, respecting the Penobscot culture, wanted to pull together something. So he pulled together this essay contest, very successful in the beginning. We still have some teachers that enjoy doing it because they're, it's pretty basic. We just ask students to come up with 500 to 1,000 words on any topic that the teacher has done with them in class. And the, you know, the biggest thrill of it is that they get a participation certificate. And if we do do some judging on the essays and invite the winning classrooms to the winners in their classroom to come to Augusta, to come to the archives and see our holdings for Native American history. And also we will coordinate a visit to the state house or the state museum or anything they'd like to do while they're in Augusta that day on on the state campus. So we have a lot of people interested in that. You might think about in the fall. The mock election program is still on at this time. We do do a student mock election every other year. We hope to do it this year. It's scheduled on the 21st of October. Uh, this is the site for it if you wanna learn some more. Um, the one thing I want to point out is we do this program in conjunction with the National Student Mock Election Program. This program is um, sponsored by the National Association of Secretaries of State. They are a partner with them. This program has an online component. You can, let's see, I wanted to point out some curriculum guides. There are some curriculum And I'll just point out this online piece. So in Maine, we do not do this online voting online ballot. The reason we do not do that, they're going to redirect here. See right here, it says teacher sign up, right? It's free. We don't do that in Maine because we actually have a rally tally event. Most states do not. There's only a couple of states that do. So what we do is we have, we've chosen October 21st for our mock election day. So we will have a ballot available on our website that can be downloaded or emailed if it comes to that to students to participate in this project. We, we solicit a coordinator at each school to tally the results. That's, and you can take a group of students, you can figure out however you want to get those tallies done. We have the tallies sent in to a rally event that we will have at the uh, Gusta Army. Students will be bussed into the Army and any school that wants to participate, and we will get them busy collecting um, results and posting them real time on our website so that the students that aren't in Augusta that day can check the website to see who's ahead in the student vote. We partner with the student a national site so that we can combine our votes with other students across the country that are voting in that it's the same two week time period. Each school does what works best for them, but they'll combine all the votes, usually by the first week of November, to see you know which which national um, candidates are ahead. Um, it's 
pretty exciting. Not every state participates in this program, but several, many of them do. So we just ask that if you want to participate in this program, do not do the online balloting because that goes directly to national. We submit our results to national and then our votes will be double count. So we want to make sure that you participate so that we can make our rally a, a success. Right here on their page, they have lots of curriculum guides. They are dated, but if you go into them, they are pretty comprehensive. They have downloadable items for you here. We also have an item on our webpage that is uh, mock election ideas for your school. I'll just point it out right here. Some of them, you know, suggest having people come to your school and visit and candidates to talk to your class, but you could certainly do that remotely. Have your, somebody from your, your town clerk come visit your school. You could do that remotely, uh, participating with a clerk or registrar. Students are hearing a lot about candidates on the TV right now. I know I have a college a freshman student at home She's pretty excited that she had her political science class this year because she's, you know, connecting the dots of what she's seeing and what she's hearing. You may consider working with a town clerk right now because they will be very, very busy in the fall and may not have as much time available to do some classroom work with you. There's all sorts of items here that you might be able to adjust and use for your programming. And we also have Maine Civil War History in Schools program. We have several schools that utilize this in the past. It's a long list here. Very popular. And basically, we sent out um, people to the classrooms to talk about Maine's role in the Civil War and how the people, even the people that were on the home front contributed to the Civil War. And, um, you know, made bandages like folks now are doing masks and things. So uh, knit socks and everything they did. And what the speaker will talk about is, you know, what did people in your community do during the Civil War? What memorials still last from them? You know, what did it take for communities? What was Maine's contribution? We sent so many people there. We have all sorts of records from the Civil War. I would say this is something for fourth grade and up. The younger kids, if, even fourth grade, they get really jazzed and interested in the drama of what we're talking about, but they may not have the background yet. So even high school students that have done a little studying can really benefit from this program. It's been, this particular program has been on the back burner a little bit because we have bicentennial programming available now. And basically the same sort of program with a bicentennial component. That piece is um, administered by the Maine State Archives. So you can definitely visit the archive site and learn a little bit more about that. Uh, can you all hear me? I can hear you, but not, oh, now I see you. Okay, so I got a little message. I can and hear you. Knocked out. Okay, yep. so definitely yeah. visit the archive site. Is everybody on board? Yes. Okay, great. I think that's all for the programming. Reviewed all of that. I would like to, let's see, what can we talk about now? We'll do the games. Just want to review that for the younger students. We have this interesting chickadee club jumble, really popular. Try to figure out the words at the very end. There's a secret word. And if you want to, you can submit your contact information and you, you know, you'll send a little letter saying that you're in the chickadee club and you get a pin. This is what the pin looks like. It's pretty nice. It's nice for the younger kids. They really enjoy that. This is our oh, I have this is our bookmark that we'll send out if we send you any certificates for you know this spring programming. We can 
put one of those in there too. The kids love that. We also have the vanity plate game. It is just a basic one, a little quiz just for fun. This, the main symbols is the little quiz that the younger ones enjoy. And we also have the coloring book. Now with the poster and essay contest, we notice a lot of students utilize the coloring books for their, well teachers utilize it for learning. We get a lot of, you know, adaptations of the coloring book where the kids send in their symbols posters. You can download it right here. It seems to be very popular, um, especially with the younger ones. So please consider that. We have the kids' recipes. They're just, just basic stuff for fun here. And about me, a lot of information here available for you to consider or for your students to take a peek at. We have this photo album page is really not a lot of photos here. It is just a piece of the George French photos available on the archives website. This particular collection is called Every Day in Maine. Very interesting. They're from the 30s to the 50s. And you can find it on the archives site under, see I jotted that down because it's a little difficult to find. online exhibits. You want to look for online exhibits and you can find the George French collection and many, many other collections. Very interesting. You can use them for primary source documents to work it into um, anything you're interested in. We have this page with kid books on there. I don't think there's anything great there for you to use, but we do have this famous people from Maine. And this is really just tidbits of information on different folks in different categories just to generate interest for students and to make them aware of you know all the notable people from me there's plenty here that the students could find someone they were interested in to write a report about or to tie into a an essay let's see what else the history i think we touched on that before main product, just a little bit of stuff. You might also want to check the Department of Economic and Community Development website. They have a lot of these items too, if you're interested in that. Main wildlife is pretty interesting. This is by far the most, kids come to the state house, they all get the animals, tracks, document, they love it. This has been popular for years and years. I don't know if it's anything you can use. I just wanted to point it out to you. Also, that's items that are great on the site. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. They have a great program where they will um, bus students over to their facility in Portland and do the lab venture where, I don't know if you've been to this thing, it's great. I went to, with one of my kids when they were, um, I think fourth grade and participated in this and then you you learn a little bit on site and then you go back to the classroom and you're able to finish your research obviously you know that won't be able to happen the on-site piece right now but they have all this other content that's really interesting and fascinating about marine items and then our own ifnw has a lot of educational items as well they have this video series where you can go with a biologist to the different places and see what they do. I didn't know if maybe perhaps that might be something that you can tie into what you're doing. And also the Maine State Aquarium. They normally do not open until I think Memorial Day. However, they do have resources for educators, whether or not they end up opening this spring. Lots and lots of things here that might be of interest to you when you're putting together a lesson. So we have the state symbols and song. We had that on the other page. And this tree of facts is always popular. 
we have links to most of these have links of where we got the information from and it's right here in case you'd want to use that as well. I want to head over to the government piece now. The counties is, is just all basic data we have there available for you. That's the song, but you can, just, you know, interesting items right here about each county, the basic stuff. License plate, this just talks about specialty plates in Maine and what they all are. I don't know if that's the best place to file it, um, but that's interesting as well. The state government piece, is very informative. There's also a link to the Maine State Constitution right here that brings you directly to the Maine State Library's <coughs> site where you can go directly to the document. Easy place to find it. Lots of information here that would be helpful. And you can also get right here to the legislature's homepage. During a regular session, obviously the session has ended now, but you can listen to committees. You can see what's available in what each committee will be reviewing that particular day to see what is on the calendar. State House just does a little bit of history. Leon, toilet's running. Not sure what that is. Oh, somebody... um, right here, I want to point out the path to Maine law lawmaking. This was popular for a long, long time. We had a video and it was outdated. So we, we made a brand new video, really interesting, explains the process in another format for students to learn about how a bill becomes a law. There's also some great information right here, how to contact the state house, write a letter to your legislator, prepare testimony. Um, there's some games here, some word scrambles, board games, student activities, all related to making laws. So definitely check that out if that's anything you'd be interested in. And let's see, I only have part. I like the in here. I wanted to get to the links. We have these homework help links with a lot of interesting things for you to check out. Don't forget these, uh, this list on the right hand side, those are all live links. Interesting. One thing I wanted to show you here is the to market to market. This links up to the Maine State Archives and these are some interesting um, trademarks that are registered in the state of Maine, old ones that are particularly pretty and you know just tell a little bit about the history of Maine through trademarks there's also some more available on the on the archive site and let's see kids pages in other states where did I see that weather I wanted to point out that the kids pages in other states, which I'm not seeing, maybe you can see it. We have a link to those in there. It's a real interesting, oh, maybe it's in the other page. Oh, there it is, right here. This is kind of an interesting interactive map where you can just go to another state and see what their state flower is. We know, oh, I, we know that um, a lot of, we get a lot of requests from students across the country. I'm sorry, I didn't pick a great example there. Um, who are interested in learning more about Maine. They're studying Maine this year. Can I please send them a bookmark or whatever? What, and they, you know, send a little Q&A about main state, you know, animal and all of that. So if you are interested in that, you can utilize this piece right here. That basically covers our kids page. 
Do any of you have any questions or can I assist you or get you information about anything that you'd be interested in? I guess I could point out this as well before the um, main bicentennial celebration is going on right now. And I just wanted to point out that the events programs here, we have a great program administered through the Maine State Archives. If I can get to it. Where they have the, you know, basically that virtual reality piece right here that we talked about before. You can also get to it here and the uh, Maine, Histor Maine Historical Society has speakers that will go out and additional information available for students. There are some programming. Let me see if I can find it here. They have lesson plans available. Educators piece right here under get involved. And you can see the curriculum that Maine State Historical, Maine Historical Society has put together here. They're also looking for your content to share on their website, anything that you would put together. And that's about it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I guess we're all set, Joe. Questions for Nicole at this time? In the chat box, um, Roxanne said, I work on a unit about Maine and my students love these games. Awesome. Thank you, Roxanne. Cindy said, Maine Memory Network is another great place to find photos and exhibits. Exactly. Um, I didn't want to spoil it, but um, <laughs> it is tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We will be having um, a session led by the Maine Historical Society. Um, and today at one o'clock, we will have a session led by the Maine State Archives um, today as well. So we're looking for other state groups that have uh, similar work as well. And Craig shared that he liked the George French photos, that they were fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Um, so that was everything that came through in the chat box. Is there anything else? We have five, maybe up to 10 minutes or so for some questions. Um, and I would encourage you not only if you have questions for Nicole, um, but also with each other, now that you're seeing uh, some of these resources and looking, are people familiar with this site? Have you used it before? Is this new learning? How are you anticipating using this? Um, is it something you've used before? Well, we've got a collective group of 18. Let's see if we can put our brains together for a couple minutes. Leslie says, this is new to me. Leslie, did anything strike you as something um, that you'd be most interested in using? Do you think you'd be willing to share as a thought? Um, well, um, <clears throat> having taught in other states, I usually fourth grade was always the state study. And I know, at least for the district I'm in now, that doesn't happen any longer. And so when my kids get to me in grade six, a lot of the times they don't have this background. And so I think I'm gonna be linking this page and quite a bit um, back to my sixth graders for when they have, or if they have any interest independently to check out while they're remote at home. So I think it's a great resource for that. Great. I wish I could get the video to work, but it's not working. Thank you, Jen. Craig said, the essay competitions are a great option for some of my kids. I'll be sharing these opportunities with them via Google Classroom. Uh, Pamela says, I've used the information on foliage to put together lessons in the fall. Great. Um, C. Brandy says, love these websites. These are new to me. Uh, Hildy says, I've used this site previously, but I am thrilled that it looks updated and will use it as a, it, it, will use it as a great resource. Wonderful. Again, if you need to contact me, my um, email address is 
N-I-C-O-L-E dot L-A-D-N-E-R at name.gov. Any questions you have, feel free to send them along. I'd be happy to help. Nicole, I just dropped that in the chat box for everybody as well. And somebody had asked right at the beginning, um, and so I put it in there as well. Great. The Nicole Ladder at main.gov. I am dropping in at this point. Um, there's a link to a Google form. Um, if you need 